Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm very excited to bring you these seven high-end looking budget fall decor DIYs. Today's first DIY is a blessed pumpkin trio. I'm going to be using one of the white monogram pumpkins and one of the little gingham pumpkin decor, some words and ribbon from Hobby Lobby and also some vinyl from Dollar Tree. So once I remove the metal leaf and the little ribbon from my large pumpkin, I'm going to use this black and white gingham vinyl from Dollar Tree. Now, if you don't have the vinyl, you can always Mod Podge scrapbook paper. This is basically the same thing, just without the Mod Podge. I'm just going to lay this down like a giant sticker over the white part of my pumpkin. Actually, I think it's gonna go all the way up to the stem and just press it down to get it um, with no bubbles and just go around the edges to make sure it's fully secured. Then I'm going to trim it and then go around it with my Fiskars finger knife and just get it as close to the edge as I possibly can for a nice clean edge all the way around my pumpkin sign. Now on the left, this smaller pumpkin is one of those white and black gingham ones from Dollar Tree this fall. And I'm going to paint this with my moss chalk paint along with uh, one or two of these wood leaf stickers from Hobby Lobby that I used in a past uh, project. And then this other pumpkin is actually from Dollar General. I'm just painting the backside with my pumpkin chalk paint. Then coming back to my large pumpkin, you've seen me do this before. I'm going to attach some jute twine to the back with hot glue and then wrap the stem completely with the jute twine. It gives it a nice texture and just a different color than the pumpkin sign originally. Coming back to my smaller pumpkins, I'm just going to use a couple of my paint markers just to go around and give some dimension to our flat little pumpkins here. You can do as few or as many of these lines as you want. And then you can see that I'm going to take a sanding block and then I'm going to sand this just to fade out both the paint color and the lines that I've drawn on. Now I'm ready to put my pumpkin trio together. I'm going to just use some hot glue, layer on the small green one, and then the medium size pumpkin colored one, and get those down, and then we'll begin to add some bows. I'm, I love this plaid ribbon this year from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to fold over a piece so that they overlap in the middle there at the back, and then tie in the center with a piece of jute twine. Knot it pretty good, and then we're just going to hot glue that up here in the left corner of our pumpkin sign. Then I'm going to take that metal leaf and ribbon that were at the top of our sign, and I'm going to glue those on my orange pumpkin as well as this little green leaf. Then taking my burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna do another slightly smaller um, just loop bow where I'm just going to tie it in the center with jute twine. And we're going to hot glue this on top of the fall colored plaid ribbon. Next, I'm going to take some jute twine and tie a tiny little bow that I'm going to glue onto my green pumpkin just to give that a little something at the top. Mm -hmm. 
Now you could use any of these wood words that you want on your pumpkin. I'm going to use blessed, but I wanted to give it a little backdrop. So I'm going to take another piece of the burlap ribbon. I'm going to cut off the two wire edges and fray each of the four sides just to make it look more of like a patch of burlap. I'm gonna glue that down in the center of my pumpkin there and then glue the word blessed right over top. My last little touch will be this orange gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby's fall craft section. Just a small little bow that we're going to just add as a third layer on our bow here up on the left side of our pumpkin and then this project will be finished. If you're new to my channel today, I really hope you like what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Also, be sure to hit the bell and choose all for notifications so YouTube will notify you each time I upload new content. For my second project today, I wanted to try a mini version of the racetrack lantern using just one racetrack piece, one of these wood square plaques from Michaels, some florals, and a wooden napkin ring. So these are 99 cents at Michaels all the time. On the back here, I'm going to remove the hanger, the metal hanging bracket, and also the staples that were holding the jute twine on. This, so we have a flat back. Now I am going to darken up this wood with my antique wax just brushing it on all the surfaces inside and outside and then wiping away the excess and then let that dry completely. I just love how it looks. Now these racetrack pieces are 24 inches. So what I did is I marked there at 11 and three quarter inches. That's going to make one piece slightly smaller than the other piece. So I'm going to use my inside or my smaller piece on the inside or bottom and then the other one will go over the top. You'll see what I mean in a second. Now I did try um, to spray paint these but it was way too hot and the paint was bubbling. So since it's a fall lantern, I decided to leave my racetrack pieces orange and I'm just dry brushing them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. It's kind of an ivory or off white. I did decide once that was dry to go ahead and Mod Podge over it on the outside and inside just to keep the paint from flaking off. Next, I'm taking this little burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and just hot gluing it right down the middle of each of my racetrack pieces just to add some more texture and give it a little bit more of a fall look overall. So I'll do this to both of my pieces. I decided also to raise up my lantern a little bit. So I'm using four of these little wood, I think they're called plugs. They look like mini, mini candle holders. But anyway, I got those on clearance at Hobby Lobby and just made them as little feet on my lantern box. Now this is my smaller. So this is the piece that measures 11 and 3 quarter inches. You can see when you're making such a tight curve with the racetrack pieces, they do buckle just a tiny little bit, but it didn't bother me. I'm going to secure this to the inside of my wood box with a combination of E6000 and hot glue. And we'll do both sides of this piece and then we will let that dry completely before we then attach our other piece. I did also use a little bit more hot glue on the inside just to help keep it secure. 
then you can see that second piece that is slightly longer is going to go up and over the opposite two corners and we'll glue that down like we did the first one and let that dry completely. Now there's so many different things you could put at the top of your lantern. I had some of these dark wood napkin rings in my stash from a thrift store. So I just decided to glue one of those at the top. Now I'm just gonna use a battery powered tea light in the center of my lantern. And then some of these little, I think they were called fall grass or something like that. Some of these dark red ones. And then I will also use a couple of the yellow ones just to add a little bit of floral to this piece. Here's our finished product. I do love my larger version from a previous video, but I think for smaller spaces, using just one track piece and making this smaller lantern is a great option as well. DIY number three is a Hello Fall pumpkin sign using mini Scrabble tiles, one of these hanging signs with the wood beads, another one of those gingham pumpkins, and some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. So these signs came out last year around Christmas and I was excited, I think it was Christmas or maybe it was fall, and I was excited to see them again. They're very easy to just cover that background and then modify for whatever theme you want. So just tracing the square backing, I'm gonna cut out my scrapbook paper and then I'm just going to use a jot glue stick to secure that backing paper down. I'm going all over the sign and then also my scrapbook paper and then lay that down and smooth it out before returning it back into the sign. Now taking another one of these gingham pumpkin decor, I'm going to flip it over to the back and I am going to Mod Podge on this really cute fall colors plaid paper. I just needed a small piece and just smooth that out. And then once it's dry, we will trim off the paper. Now I cannot tell you where I got, I think these little pieces are from a travel Scrabble game, but um, they're super cute and tiny. And I found to spell the words, hello fall. And then now I'm coming back to my pumpkin to trim off the excess of the scrapbook paper. Then using my sanding sponge, I'm just getting off any excess paper so it's nice and flush. And it does also give it kind of a cute worn edge there. Then just taking some hot glue, I'm just going to glue that down to the center of my sign. Coming back to these wood stickers from Hobby Lobby, I'm just going to take one of the leaves and paint it again with our moss chalk paint. Then we're going to go ahead and hot glue our letters right across the middle of our pumpkin that spell out the word hello. And then the word fall will come down on that second L in the word hello. Very, very cute. If I did it again, I would probably move it, the Scrabble letters down just a little bit. Now I'm taking my jute twine and wrapping it around three fingers. I'm going to tie it in the center and make a little jute bow to glue at the top of our pumpkin. Then we'll also glue on that green wood leaf sticker that we just painted. And then I was noticing that it looks like there was kind of a lot of space at the bottom. So I decided to take a little bit of this Spanish moss and just glue it down there underneath our pumpkin to kind of fill it out and balance out our sign. If 
you enjoy budget home decor videos, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and they will show it to more people. For DIY number four, I'm going to make some wall pockets to put florals in using two of these word signs, two pencil holders, and some fall florals. So first you can see I did spray paint my pink pencil holders with a more neutral brown and then I'm going to remove the word layer from my two signs. I'm going to use some wood grain looking paper. Um, you can just use scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby. I was out so I pulled out this roll that I had from a local store and just measure the inside. I believe it was about eight and an eighth by four and an eighth or something like that. So I'm measuring out and cutting two pieces, one to go inside each of my signs. Now before I Mod Podged that paper in, I did go around the edges with my truffle chalk paint just in case my paper wasn't quite exact and I didn't want to see any pink or blue showing through. So go ahead and paint all the way around the edges of your signs. Then I'm also going to use that same dark brown to dry brush on my pencil holders. Just wanting to give these more of a textured look and kind of a wood look. Once my paint was dry then I am going to put some Mod Podge down on the center of each of my tall signs here and go ahead and Mod Podge that wood paneling looking paper right on the inside of each sign. While those were drying, I did decide just to take a lighter tan color and dry brush one more time on my pencil holders that will be my little pockets to put some florals in. Once all the painting was done, I did uh, go ahead and do some Mod Podge, again, only because this base is plastic and I didn't want the paint to scratch off or chip off. So just go ahead and do a layer of Mod Podge on each one and then we will let that dry completely. Now that everything's dry, we're going to take our hot glue and just put a generous amount on the back of this pencil holder. You can see that this did have a suction cup there on the back, but we're not going to use those for this project. These fit perfectly inside these signs, so we're gonna glue those in. And then we're going to make a couple jute twine hangers for the back. I'm going to double up the jute twine tie a knot on either end and then we'll go ahead and glue each of those to the backs of our signs just to make a small little um, hanger to be able to hang these on the wall if you so choose. Once our hangers were glued on and dried, I did take a small little piece of floral foam and tuck it down inside each of our pockets to give our florals something to poke into. Now these are maple leaves. Um, I bought white and blue and decided to use the blue for this project. And then this hop bush, I had it in about four different colors. I decided to use the burgundy and the orange just because I really liked those three colors together. So just taking your wire cutters, just go ahead and cut your individual pieces. That way you can divide them between your two wall pockets and then be able to arrange your florals however you like. And here's how they turned out. I love that these are neutral enough that you could just change out the florals seasonally based on whatever type of decor you have at the time.
for my fifth project today I am making this family blessings wood ladder looking sign using some of the rectangular wood planks from Walmart two five gallon paint stir sticks and then you can choose to use wood words I'm going to use a couple of my stencils from a maker studio so for my four wood planks I'm gonna paint two of them with my pumpkin chalk paint and the other two with moss and I did do front back and all the edges you can see my two paint sticks are done with the antique wax then laying them out and spacing them as evenly as I can I'm going to glue them on just with hot glue and I have my paint sticks are just as wide as the rectangle now I do end up cutting off those two top pieces of the paint stick but I don't show that so here I'm showing you, you can use some of these wood words from Dollar Tree, or you can use ones from Hobby Lobby that say grateful, thankful, blessed. I decided to use um, and show you again these wonderful stencils from a maker studio. I'm going to do family and then that little leaf in the middle, and then I'm just gonna use the word blessings from that other stencil. So these are adhesive, you can use them over and over and they just stick down to your clean dry surface there and then using some of the chalk art and the little spatula i'm going to just push in some of the white chalk art into the mesh stencil and then once i'm sure that it's all in there evenly you can scrape away any excess lift up your stencil and you have a beautiful crisp stencil design same thing here with the little leaf garland. And then I'm gonna do just the word blessings, like I said, and I'm not going to use all of that flourish at the bottom. So there you go, super easy and let it dry. You rinse off the stencils right away and lay them out to dry and they'll be ready to use next time. Now I'm going to use, this is, I think how Caitlin on Crafts by Caitlin does her bows, she just kind of, um, loops it over like that tail and then a loop and then a loop and another tail and she ties it in the middle with the um, jute twine and here I'm going to dovetail the edges and this is a really simple way to make a cute little bow that has the um, tails on the end. I am like I said earlier in this video loving this fall plaid ribbon um, also has a little bit of shimmer in there with the gold and I'm just gonna glue that down to my top wood slat I'm gonna make a smaller one without tails just with the loop of burlap ribbon tied in the middle and we're gonna glue that on top and then I think I added an acorn to the very center but this is a really simple sign and I just love how you can modify it with the colors and the sayings. The information about the Maker Studio stencils is also in the description box below. If you are looking for any of the craft supplies or tools that I use, be sure to check out my Amazon storefront. The link is in the description box below. I have loved all of today's projects, but I think my favorite two are coming up now. This is a chicken wire looking framed pumpkin using a canvas, some of this gutter guard, some berry garland, one of these 3D pumpkins, and some scrapbook paper. So I'm going to take my pumpkin chalk paint and I'm just going to paint the base sections of this pumpkin. It's okay if you get some on the raised areas because we're going to cover that with scrapbook paper. Now this is a 12 by 12 wrapped canvas that I had used um, this summer. Our family did a spray gun painting activity. It was super fun. This was my painting and I'm going to just remove the canvas and then all the staples using my staple remover. And I love that these canvases have such a pretty wood frame underneath. So using my antique wax again, I'm just going to darken this up. I'm not gonna make you watch me do it. You've seen me use this before, so just brush it on all the surfaces. And then you're going to just use a paper towel to wipe away the excess. And it's just a nice, non-smelly, non-toxic way to get that nice dark wood stain look. So we'll get that wiped off and then set that aside to dry. 
Then once it is dry, you can use chicken wire for this. I'm using gutter guard. It's a plastic mesh. It's a little bit of a finer mesh and it's really easy to cut with scissors. So it is six inches wide. So you're gonna need two pieces and just trim it so that it fits behind the frame without sticking out. So I used a staple gun to pull this tight and staple it all the way around and then do the same thing with your second piece, having them meet up in the middle. Now coming back to my pumpkin, I'm just gonna use my fingernail to go around the raised sections of the pumpkin. And then once I've done that on all three sections on my scrapbook paper, I'll be able to turn it over and see exactly where I need to cut to get my three sections. We'll use some of our Mod Podge and get that down on those three raised sections. And then we'll go ahead and spray the scrapbook paper and get that adhered to the pumpkin and ready to dry. And once I had those pieces down, I did take the excess Mod Podge on my brush and just go around over the orange sections just to give everything a nice uniform finish. Then taking my truffle chalk paint again, I'm just going to paint the stem of our pumpkin on the front and the edges and then let that dry. I love that they came back with these berry garlands this year for fall. I'm hoping they have them for Christmas too. I just took a few pieces, kind of wrapped them in the center and glued those down to our pumpkin. And then taking the orange gingham ribbon again from Hobby Lobby, I'm going to tie a small bow and leave the tails a little bit longer. And then behind this though, I'm going to take this kind of lace ribbon also from Dollar Tree and tie a bow with it that will go behind because it is a little bit of a wider ribbon. We'll lay that down with some hot glue and then put the orange gingham ribbon on top. Now that our pumpkin is all decorated, we're just going to put some hot glue all over the back of it. And then we're going to attach this down on our chicken wire looking sign. You can see that the pumpkin completely covers where the two pieces of mesh lined up. So you can't even tell that it's two pieces. I love the colors of this and was so, so happy with how it turned out. And for DIY number seven, I'm going to use the farmhouse calendar from Dollar Tree and this cutting board or pizza board or bread board that I found at a thrift store along with the gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree. So I did give this a pretty good sanding. It was a little warped. Um, and then I'm going to, of course, do my antique wax on it. I'm just loving the dark brown for fall along with like the orange and the turquoise colors. So I did do the entire front, back, and edges of my cutting board. Now this is the November uh, image in this farmhouse truck calendar. So remove it very carefully and it almost perfectly fits on this cutting board. And I love this image that the picture is the whole page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm lining it up here and I'm going to apply some Mod Podge to the whole front side of my cutting board, spread that out with my sponge brush and then lightly misting my calendar image with water. It's going to like suck right down onto the Mod Podge. So be sure you move quickly and get it lined up how you want it. I have the top edge pretty level and then just going around and smoothing out any bubbles. Now these pages are very thin and so I did get a few bubbles, but you'll see I really like how it added to the overall effect. Once this was dry, I'm taking sandpaper and going around the edges to remove the excess so that the image is only on the very flat 
front side of the cutting board. So I'm gonna go around those curves and just get all that excess of the images off. So where the bubbles were, I also sanded over that and I love how it gave it a worn and kind of, um, I don't know, just a worn look right on the image of the truck as well. I did go over the entire thing with Mod Podge and let that dry. And then I wanted something decorative there at the top where the line of the calendar page um, kind of ended. So I took that orange gingham ribbon again and I'm just hot gluing one little strip right across there where the handle starts to move up on the cutting board. Just trim it and kind of wrap it around the sides there and hot glue those down on the back. Then taking the wide black and white gingham wired ribbon from Dollar Tree, I'm going to cut a pretty good length here. I'm going to tie it in a knot first around the handle and then I'm going to flip the cutting board over so that I can tie my bow and have it end up with the loops on the top and the tails on the bottom. So I just make two loops, I wrap them around each other, and then when I pull them, you can see the loops are closer to me. Just kind of keep working with it until you get the loops and the tails the length that you want. Then I just dovetailed the tails there by folding them in half and cutting at an angle. You can fluff out your loops of your bow and then this is how it turns out. Just get it as tied tight as you can. And I love this project. This is one that came to me just yesterday when I was crafting and it may be my favorite one of this video. Thank you again so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed what you saw. Please be sure to comment and let me know which of these projects was your favorite. And we'll see you next week. Bye.